One thing that happened on that field last night, Mike, late in the game, Devontae Adams takes a hit that, that clearly affects him. And the, the shot of him on the ground was disturbing. It was chilling. And it was a reminder that this is still a very brutal and violent game. We, we need to talk about the hit, but we also need to talk about what happened after the hit, the fact that he was not out of the game for very long, maybe only one play. Now they had an extended break. It was obvious he's in distress there. Here's the hit. Now, it's – oh, you see a helmet hit the chin, but, you know, it, it wasn't a classic helmet-to-helmet hit. Absolutely not. And I know this is going to get talked about all day, so I'm glad I have an early time to jump on this. To me, absolutely nothing wrong with the hit. I, 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 I did not think so at all. Jimmy Ward with the hit. You know, when they started, and it wasn't really changing the rules. It was enforcing the rules a few years ago for safety reasons. I understood it. Did they go too far sometime, whether it was with a, a receiver or with a quarterback? Absolutely. But they're trying to send the message they want this out of the game. And I get it because of the head injuries that were going on, all the discussion of CTE years ago that they wanted to, to, to mitigate that. And all of a sudden, DBs had to change the way they had learned to tackle. That is the way they, they – now, never launch you with your head completely down. You, you always are taught, uh, see what you hit. But the launching and the hitting with the helmet, what they wanted out of the game. So – and then we get to see everything in slow motion as well, and it looks way more devastating in slow motion. So to me, what Ward did, now he did launch, but sometimes that's still going to happen because you're going to be further away from the receiver and you want to break up a pass. You want to break up the play. And people are going to say, well, the ball was out of his hands. You're watching it in slow motion. This is bang, bang. If the ball, you're already in the air to hit somebody you think might be catching the ball. And to me, Mike, he led with his shoulder. He did not lead with his head. He turned his shoulder and he turned his head. It was actually the side of his helmet that caught Devontae Adams in the chin or right under the face mask. So to me, he was doing what the league wanted. He didn't lead with his head. He led with his shoulder. He did launch, but there's no rule that says you can't launch and not turn your body. And that's what he did. He turned his body, and he caught him flush in the, in the stomach and the chest with his shoulder. To me, that's where the full impact first went, was right into the rib cage of Devontae Adams. And then it caught him under the, I believe, under the chin with the side of uh, Ward's helmet. It. And it was a devastating blow. But then the question comes in, Mike, because you have independent doctors now. What did he get looked at for when, when he goes in the tent? What are you looked at for? Are you being evaluated for co concussion? He said it was his chest. It looked like it was an area where you could have got the wind knocked out of you as well. But you saw the look in his eye as well where you're going, God, get that guy off the field. There are, there are protocols now to where a guy, if, if he is in distress and in, in danger of that, it's even – it's up to – there's independent doctors there. So it, it's not even a team doctor saying, well, you know, uh, he's on – we need him out there, so I'm going to – you know, he, I asked him how many fingers he had three up, or I had three up, and he said two, and I said close enough, which, by the way, that's how we used to do it, which was ridiculous. Um, and, and we need to get him back in the game. There are markers set in place now to not allow that, so – Whatever went on, and, and hopefully we'll find out more and more about it. I know what Devontae Adams said about himself, said he's a little different. Okay. Um, but to me, as far as the hit was concerned, I had no problem with the hit. You want to start talking about the protocol after that, certainly willing to have that discussion. Now, you know, philosophically, there can be plenty of debates and discussions about whether or not these things should be fouls. The NFL, I think, in the aftermath of the reckoning that it faced October of 2009, when both Roger Goodell and Demora Smith were called to Congress to answer tough questions about why the league has taken these matters not nearly as seriously as they need to, this was part of it. The three plays, bang, 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 in succession, about 10 minutes apart in real time from October 17 of 2010 – created this urgency to enforce the rule that protects defenseless receivers from hits to the head and neck area and hits by the helmet. And if the NFL had a Dean Blandino or Mike Pereira now that they would put out there to explain it today, and I wish they did, and I wish they would, I think they would try to harmonize your concern with the reality that it's a strict liability standard, and if you do make contact with the head or neck area of the receiver, the flag comes out. And we're conditioned to expect that. We talked two weeks ago about that Zadarius Smith hit on Jameis Winston, yes. and I think we came to the conclusion – 
The only reason the flag came out is because we're used to seeing a flag come out when a guy gets hit that hard now. And we're used to seeing what we saw last night. We're used to seeing the flag come out. That's the way the game's been officiated. And that's been the, the, the philosophical decision the NFL has made to protect the players from blows to the head. So I understand how you explained it. But I think if the league had a Blandino or a Pereira making the rounds today on this show, on other shows, on any show, wherever, the explanation would be, all that said, we had contact with the chin by the helmet. That's a flag. Defenseless player. That's how we do it. That's what we do. And I think that's why so many people were reacting, saying, where the hell was the flag? And it was exacerbated by the fact that Adams got back in. And you mentioned the spotters. They've got the certified athletic trainers who are spotters. And one of the... And that one, that didn't come into play here because he did get checked. One of the concerns I've had about it, Mike, there's so many people who have a finger on the button to stop the game and remove a player. There's too many because any one of them is going to think, I'll let somebody else do it. There's somebody else who's looking at it too. Yeah. I don't want to be the one to pull the guy out of the game. Yeah, listen, I, I, I agree with you on that. And going back, maybe I should have led with because I agree with you. I thought for sure there was going to be a flag. You get a hard hit today, and, and, and I don't blame the refs. Everybody gets mad at the refs. The, the refs are told to do this. They're going to err on the side of throwing the flag and worry about it later. Because remember, the refs get graded as well. After every single game on every single play, they get a grade as well. And I, I was stunned that a flag was not thrown. And then I think a lot of people were stunned that Devontae Adams was back in after missing just a play. So that th there, there, are two, there are two parts to this. The hit itself, which I agree with you, I thought there was going to be a flag. I personally am happy there wasn't because I actually thought Ward was following more of the protocols of leading with the shoulder. And, yeah, there, it, there, there's going to be a time some incidental contact with the helmet to the, the, the chin or the face mask of the receiver. That's going to happen, and it always looks way worse in slow motion than in real time. But then, it, then it's after, because we all know the protocols of, of a concussion. If you are truly, if, if that is a concern, they're going to, they end up taking you in to the, uh, into the locker room and go through a battery of tests there. Obviously, nobody felt it got to that point where Devontae Adams felt good enough to go back in the game. And that's always the concern, and we've seen it with Julian Edelman in the Super Bowl several years ago. And think about what would have happened right. last night if they would have said Devontae Adams needs a full-blown concussion evaluation in the locker room in a quiet, controlled environment, take off the shoulder pad, sit there for a few minutes, check him out, make sure he's fine. Meanwhile, the game's gone on without him. And Aaron Rodgers doesn't have the guy who caught the 25-yarder and the 17-yarder that set up the victory. That's the tension that the NFL is dealing with in situations like that. But, but just to put a button on this and move on to the other game, whether it's the hit, whether it's the protocol, this is where the NFL is lacking, in my view, in not having the human beings who can be the faces and the voices of this. So we aren't the ones who are trying to explain it. Let them explain it, and we can react to their explanation. But, Mike, they got the resources to hire the best of the best who can provide what would be a persuasive explanation as to what should have happened with the hit, what should have happened, what did happen with the evaluation. I wish they would do that. It doesn't seem to be that difficult. I don't know why they don't find people who can come in and provide those explanations day after game. So fans feel some satisfaction and understanding that the league cares about these issues and is trying its damnedest to help people understand them. Oh, I completely agree. Transparency, right? That, that's what we want. And that's where football wanted to go for a while when they went through everything you just talked about for a number of years. They wanted to be more transparent about things because normally in sports, and, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to fault sports and professional sports, I should say, because I was part of this. There was the hiding aspect. Every player wants to be on the field. Every player, in my opinion, or 99% or of them known to mankind, will, will fake something or say they're fine to get back on the field. They want to play. So ultimately, I think the NFL has done the right thing by saying we need to take it out of their hands and put it in other people's hands. But to your point, 
And so everybody's going to be doing this is going to this is going to lead, you know, the, the, the talks all day everywhere is should he have been in the locker room? Because let, let's be honest, if he was going through those tests, he would have been there when the team came in because he would have missed the rest of the game. So I think transparency is the word. And I agree. The sooner you get that, the better off you are. Then, then at least we're not guessing. We can say, OK, this is the decision they made. And then we can either say we agree with it or we vehemently disagree with it and go on from there. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.